Episode 81 of the Loda Couch. Calc does a tasteless taste test. President Barack Obama has good movie taste. Red Dead Redemption 2 reveal. Tasmanian devils have nipples. Questions from listeners. And yeah. Reach in at your own risk. This is The Loaded Couch. All right, we're back. Episode 81 of The Loaded Couch. I'm Scotch Hound. Pigeon Bay Leg. And Celtic Fox. And tonight we're drinking some Belgian ales. Pidge, why don't you lead us off with what you're drinking since you're the lowest number? Yeah, courtesy of the uh, Scotch Hound homework. The uh, Trappist... Rochefort number six is its name. Brewery Abbey St. Remy. Is that right? Yeah, Era? I think that's right. I think, I mean, that's how I was going to say. I saw, I saw uh, another brewery. It was like Brasserie of Rochefort. So I don't know. It's a Belgian ale. It's from Belgium. Reddish brown, seven and a half percent alcohol. It's good. All right, Kelk, what are you drinking? Uh, from the same brewery. Uh, Trappist Rochefort number eight, uh, Abbey St. Remy, Belgian ale style, and uh, it's like a muddy, like coffee brown color, 9.2% alcohol. Ooh. All right, and I'm the only weirdo here who's drinking uh, Weyerbacher's Mellow Monks. It's uh, again Belgian ale out of Easton PA, uh, color is brown because it's in a brown bottle, and the ABV is 4.5% alcohol. You know, you could have got the number 10. I didn't see it. I didn't you even didn't look. get the I memo? Looking. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's why I was asking, Reed. Did you guys coordinate? Because <laughs> our clothes and our shoes got to coordinate. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to put Kelk's stank palate to the test. <laughs> All right, Kelk, this is without tasting any foods, okay? Okay. All right. We got five beer styles that go perfectly with five pizza styles. Okay. Let's... Pilsner. What do you think? Mm... <laughs> A Pilsner with a pizza style, huh? Do I have to? Let me see here. How about you give him the give him the pizza and he can pick the beer? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, P- Pilsner goes with pepperoni and mushrooms, supposedly. Okay, okay. And that's the Prima Pils, like Victory Brewing. Now, where did you get these from, Pidge, that you're giving the this actual is, brewer? Uh, this is from a, an article. I don't recall the source, but okay. Um, I know that Celtic had the Prima Pils one time. Yes, I have, yep. I think. Uh, so they're, they're saying with the pepperoni and mushroom uh, Prima Pills from Victory, the Pivo Pills from Firestone Walker, and Lagunitas Pills from Lagunitas. Lagunitas. I think I think Doom had uh, the Lagunitas the one night. No, he yeah. had the uh, he had the brown sugar. Okay, brown sugar. The one that was reco- one that was recommended from his buddy. Okay. All right. Okay. Calc. Number two. Sausage and onion. Uh, the goes right. Uh, no. You're reading this, you jerk. <laughs> it's, it's a goose. It's a goose blood. <laughs> uh, spinach, olive, mushroom, and garlic? Uh, definitely uh, definitely my farmhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Calc, Cal, Cal, with, with, with the uh, the horrible pizza of spinach, olive, mushroom, and garlic. <laughs> yeah, he loves the season. It's, oh, actually, yeah. it's actually pretty impressive because that does make a lot of sense with the farmhouse. Uh, well, the farmhouse kind of has the the whole garden in it. Exactly, and and I could really see the um the garlic going with it. So, right. so from from what you remember with that disgusting spinach, olive, mushroom, garlic pizza, <laughs> would you go with the Henny Pin or the Farmhouse Ale Tank Seven? Tank Seven. I loved that beer. It was good. Yeah, that's Boulevard. That's your jump right there. Yeah, the <laughs> Tank Seven was amazing. Would you Would you go as far as your favorite beer? It's up there. I think when I drank that, I said it was like easy top three. I mean, it's probably fighting for number one spot. Ugh. All right. All right, they say uh, stuffed spinach pie uh, pairs good with a Kolsch. Ugh, gosh. Both and the plain cheese uh, goes great with cider. No, it goes good with Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. There's some no, it's not drink. a beer. <laughs> yeah, burp. It goes with mountain, a green drink. Green drink. All right. uh, Ken pa- uh, Pagan? 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 Uh, the one-time Post Media Sports copy editor 
uh, who was charged by Toronto police with mischief for allegedly throwing a, uh, a beer can at Baltimore Orioles outfielder Juan Hume? Su Kim. Hune Su Kim? Mm-hmm. During an American League wildcard game, no longer works for the media outlet. Surprise, surprise. What an idiot. Who does that? I'm just curious. Did they fingerprint the can? I don't Jesus. know, but it, he was caught on camera. I'll tell okay, you what. So there's actual uh, video and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah and because, I was I was at the infamous uh, snowball game with the Giants and the Vikings back in the early 90s. Right. I mean, the, How old were you? You were like, what, 40 then? Yeah, about uh, late 30s. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, the fans were ruthless. I mean, but who in their right mind would throw? I mean, you're throwing a snowball. You really didn't think it was going to cause harm, but... It did. They were ice balls, especially. Yeah, they were that, ice balls. Yeah. At that at that height, they were because I remember it knocked out the. Um, it was Giants in San Diego, actually, and one of the trainers or athletic people on the sidelines got knocked out on the San Diego side <laughs> from <laughs> from the ice ball. And I remember the one play they ran in the end zone, and the guy had was trying to cover the ball up running in, and it just looked like a full on assault. Of snowballs yeah. hitting the end zone, but who the hell would throw an actual beer can, dude? But again, it's like you have to think. Okay, beer cans, beer bottles, even the plastic bottles—they're all going to be heavy with that liquid in it. Exactly. Why are you serving dude. it in anything other than a cup, like a paper cup? Dude, he he probably paid like twelve dollars for that beer. <laughs> drink it first. Yeah. Yeah. Now, no, I'm sitting here, I'm here looking at the picture. Was it an actual beer? It looks like a Red Bull can. Yeah, it looks like a Red Bull. I think they might have got it confused, but I'm just going to go yeah, with it. That because looks like one of those, um, That looks like one of those double, like the pint-sized cans. 30, tall 32 ones. ounces? <laughs> no, yeah. No, no, like a Miller Lite? Ounce or, yeah, I was going to say like the ones that they serve with the, uh, what do they call that? The Margarita ones with the beer, a Bud Light. Rita ones, yeah, yep. Oh. Like those flavored ones and stuff like that. That's kind of what it looks like. I was at a. Uh, <laughs> so what? What Rita one was he drinking? Huh? What? What Rita one was he drinking? Probably strawberry Rita. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Dude, talking about ice balls and beer cans. Philly Eagles fans throw batteries. Oh, Jesus! Jesus. <laughs> and who brings batteries to the stadium? <laughs> yeah, and how don't they catch that with like the metal detectors and everything? I don't know. Well, that was back in the day. I don't think. Uh, okay, okay. Now you came and walk in with like screws in your back or your soon to be foot <laughs> you know, like calc what movie did you watch um i didn't watch the full movie but i caught about three quarters of that movie joy oh c- come on pigeon yeah, i know yeah, i pulled, pulled pigeon, a pigeon geez. except i came in late i didn't start at three quarters and stop uh but it was she wasn't it was joy. she wasn't naked in it <laughs> yeah right i i don't know it was joy with uh what's her name uh a law hunger games yeah jennifer lawrence sorry uh it was good. It was really good. I mean, I, the one I, where... I liked uh, the character, I guess, Joy. She's the woman that created the mop. Like the, right, sorry, okay. I just want to sing Rob Bass's song every time you say Joy. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> she created the uh, the no-touch removable head mop that everybody like twists and squeezes. Yep. And then she created a, a, a whole bunch of other stuff, but she basically was the the personality to like help launch uh qvc and home shopping network and she was, she was the benjamin franklin of our of our generation yeah pretty much um it was like a rags didn't to... he have like 70 or 80 different patents or something like that uh i don't know he could have he invented the, franklin invented the yeah. glasses right no, i think he had more than he invented everything yeah <laughs> i'll look it up um but no it was it was really good i i mean i recommend checking it out uh was bradley cooper was in it for the three quarters that you watched, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. They did a bunch of movies together, didn't they? Yeah, they almost like uh, they Silver Linings Playbook and stuff together too. That and yeah. American Hustle and. Oh uh, right, okay. Yeah, hmm. I wonder if there's a thing with those. It's two. like a parody clause. Uh, he's married and stuff. But, don't tell his wife. Yeah, isn't that the situation with um? What's it, not Brad? What's Brad Pitt's ex-wife's name? Not Angelina. Jolie. Oh, Angelina. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody she does a movie with, she kind of has some kind of relationship with. Mm, I don't know, or is Something it like that? Pitt? <laughs> well that was in uh what mr and mrs smith was the mm-hmm. first movie one yeah i think yep. i think it's more of a brad pitt uh starts that type of because supposedly no, man, cause supposedly was... he hadn't the woman he had an affair was with is uh his new co-star the one brunette that played in inception mm. okay. mm. hey, did you watch anything because i didn't movie wise uh no, but Ben Franklin did invent the uh, swim fins, so you know. Oh, nice. Okay. 
Doctor Strange is reportedly tracking to open <laughs> in North America between 60 and 75 million dollars. Thor opened around 65 million, uh, and Incredible Hulk is the lowest opening with 55 and a half million. 55? I mean, 55 is still a lot. Right. But maybe not what they were expecting. But I don't know. The more I see this movie, the more I want to see it. Just the visuals alone look really cool. Yeah, I was talking on a call about it, and the only thing that I'm a little bit worried about is it going to be kind of like Inception. Because, you know, when they showed some of the uh, yeah. kind of space or like a three dimension, four dimensional space or whatever, it's like the kind of like those Escher paintings and stuff. Yeah, and I'm not too familiar with Doctor Strange's character. Mm-hmm. So it, that's why I guess it, maybe that's why it's not really clicking with me at all. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm, I I'm a fan of Cumberbatch and. I do want to see it, like you said, from the effects. Now, I think, I think you know, sixty-five, seventy-five millions, like like you said, is a really good opening for a movie. I think people have just started to get accustomed to this. All the Avenger movies coming out and doing what, like hundred and fifty million, hundred and seventy yeah. million. I mean, these standalones. That's when you have all of them together, though. Exactly. So I, these standalones, I don't think they're ever going to hold a candle to the to the you know the group Avenger movies. Mm-mm. I think Cumberbatch is definitely going to help sell this one a little bit more than like the Hulk at the fifty-five and a half million. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Just because of the amount of new movies and stuff he's been in. But. My fears came true. This movie is IMAX 3D too. Ugh. <laughs> oh, <geez>. uh, <laughs> President Barack Obama has unveiled his favorite sci-fi films and TV shows. The right. list is pretty good. Yeah. I don't uh, think I've seen any of these. I don't know if this is in his like top ten order. No, I don't. Or if it's I don't just think the ones so. that he's kind of said. So, uh, 2001: Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Star Wars, Star Trek: The Original Series, The Martian, The Matrix, and Cosmos. Matt Damon. I'd probably Cosmos. Go ahead. I, I was gonna say I'd probably almost rate all these in there. The Cosmos. Is he talking about the show? Because I Carl would... Sagan. Yes, it's the show Carl Sa- with the Carl Sagan. Okay. I would not the one with I would, Neil Grassi. I would okay. swap that out with uh, Alien. The Which mo- okay. one? Cosmos. Yeah, with Alien, the first one. No. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sigour- no. Sigourney Weaver's in it at the end. It's pretty hot. All right, Pitch. Since you have anything to talk about in movies, what'd you watch on TV? I watched uh, the season debut of NCIS. <laughs> Which one? And the regular one, the one okay. with. Uh, sexiest Man Alive from 1989, Mark Harmon. <laughs> 1989. That's that's <laughs> the real reason why yeah. he watches. Of course. <laughs> of course. And uh, I watched the. I finished season two of Wayward Pines. Okay. It's pretty good. Is it? I think the first season. The first season. The second season overall was better, but the first season grabbed me more until the end. Wayward this, is the. It's the one with Matt. Um, no, it w- the first season was Matt Dillon. The second one was with the older brother from Lost Boys. What the hell is his uh, name? Okay. I don't know. Oh, they changed it up, so it's not yeah. like the, the same actors. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and I think uh, that guy Steve-O from what's that called? That's a show called Jackass? MTV. Yeah, I think his brother's <clears throat> in it. I got to okay. I got to look it up because it looks just like him. Chuck, what'd you watch? Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say that's that's it. Okay, Chuck, what'd you watch? Um, pretty much kept with the, the regulars for the week. I watched American Horror Story. I think I'm, I think I'm all caught up on that one. Did you uh, get up to Gaga yet? Yeah, Gaga's a lot more prominent in this one now. Gaga. Uh, watched uh, episode two of Timeless, the time travel one. Yeah, poke up face my butt. Um, this face. one was about the assassination of Lincoln. Okay. And then rounded the let me week. Ask you, let me ask you a question on Timeless. I'm sorry. Yep, go ahead. next. When they go back to stop the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, mm-hmm. won't that change the future? That's what the whole show is about. That's why <laughs> That's why you need to watch it. <laughs> Did you not watch any of the commercials? No, but I'm saying, like, they change history then. Why change history? No, they're trying to. The you, one guy that goes back first is trying to do all these things to change history. These people that are hired that you're kind of following are the ones that are going back trying to stop him from doing so. Yeah, oh, the, so they're stopping somebody who's trying to stop. Like a, it's yeah, like what, Minority Report type yeah, of thing. Yeah, they're basically going back to prevent that scenario you just asked because they know if somebody screws with the past, it changes the future. Right. Right. 
So that's that's what the show's about. And then right. I rounded rounded the week out with uh, Westworld. Right. Okay. Right. Myself, I watched uh, American Horror. I'm caught up as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I watched Westworld uh, as same as Kelk. I think. Are um, you are you Gaga over Horror Story and Westworld like Kelk is? Uh, Westworld's getting interesting. It's a little bit. It's kind of starting to get a little uh, lost it's, on me. I was going to say, it's getting very like lost. Like the show lost? Yeah, lost and Inception. Like, you you got to stay on point watching it. Yeah, but it's kind of right. getting a little bit freaky with, I don't know, there's kind of, like, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't go the way of lost, where it kind of, everybody gets built up, built up, built up, and then it, like, crashes. Do you but, think um, that, you think the hype train on this show kind of puts your expectations too high? No, nah, uh, no. I, I'd say they're about on par. It might have been oversold a little bit, but I think that it is living up to the hype uh, for the most part. I'd say it's probably living up like, you know, ninety percent to the hype. Uh, so, yeah, so you're not disappointed. Hype it. Yeah, I, w- I mean, I would almost go with the route of I think it. I think it's each week it's getting, it, it's bringing the level up to meet the hype. So I, I would say I would agree with Scotchy. Like the first week might have been a little oversold, but. This past episode, like, really threw some weird questions into the, uh, you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. There's some I'm bad curious. Story and stuff too. Yeah, I'm curious to hear about your next choice. If you have any uh, uh, racist tyrants too. <laughs> yeah, the other thing uh, uh, Nicole and I have been watching is uh, Luke Cage. We're trying not to um, blow through it or whatever, but I think we're three or four episodes in now. Right, and, and, and what do you it's think? Good. It's good. It's really good. Um, like you had said, Paige, I think you said you really liked the, the music from it. Yeah, and, it's like, uh, it's like jazz hip hop, right? Yeah, and then there was um, the random uh, scene that he just uh, went through where it had some uh, bring the MF and ruckus playing in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was funny because they cut all the F bombs out of it. It it's sounded awesome. funnier without the F bombs. I mean, they left everything else, mother, mother blank and ruckus yeah. or something like that. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. I think they cut the F word out, but everything else they left. So it sounded a little strange, but. That's yeah. when he went into the, uh, to, like, the uh, bad guy den, right? Fort Knox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. What do you think good. of Cottonmouth? Cottonmouth's a really good actor. Yeah, he's doing a good job as well. Um, uh, the actor for Luke Cage himself, I, I like his actor. I like the um, like the role he's playing. There's some no, points where I'm Lock. like, yeah, yeah. There's some points where I'm like, mm, you know, it's maybe he's just not selling it the way as much as I'd like. But it, you know, it lasts for like maybe a minute he, or two. He plays. Yeah, it exactly. Cool. No. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like sometimes it's like with the playing it cool or the um. You know, it's or if it's his acting ability, I'm not 100 percent on. Stiff. Yeah, yeah, that, that was. A, but other than that, I think the show's it's 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 uh you know ten times better than what um Jessica, Jessica Jones. Jones was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, just because of the action and stuff, I think that helps sell it, and the backstory <laughs> and everything else, um, was really good. Uh, yeah. So it you know it it's I'm I'm enjoying it, and like I said, we're we're trying not to rip through it, but yeah, I think we're like four episodes in already. It's hard. It's hard not to watch like two or three episodes in a row. Yeah, that was the same thing with uh, the last few nights when uh, we've been playing, or you guys have all been playing Battlefield, and you're like, oh, you got, you coming on? And I'm like, let's just watch one more, babe. Do you, <laughs> so do you feel yeah. like do you feel like that's ruined? Do you like, <clears throat> excuse me, when you watch like a show like Westworld, does, do you wish that you could grind through it? Or are you, oh, are you content with the having to wait a week between each episode? No, I like, I like having to wait. Just See, I don't. Us. I like it that's there for me, and I can watch it whenever I want. Right. Just like Westworld, I haven't watched it yet. So you're gonna wait, you'll probably wait until the entire season's done, and then you'll do it. Probably because, like, when I watch Game of Thrones, I forget what happened three episodes ago. Mm, okay, I can see that. All right, prepare for Candy Crush, uh, the new game show on CBS. <laughs> is, that, is that crazy? CBS has ordered Candy Crush, a one-hour live action game show, to be created and executive produced by Matt Kunitz, hailing from CBS, Lion Gate, and King. Uh, in Candy Crush, the show teams of two people uh, must use their wits and physical agility to compete on enormous interactive game boards featuring next-generation technology to conquer Candy Crush and be crowned the champions. What? The poop. Yeah, I heard it was going to be somewhat similar to that show Wipeout, with like the you know the people and these giant interactive obstacles. <laughs> That's stupid. how do you? Uh, how, isn't how it just dropping like jewels or something? Yeah, exactly. 
I mean, uh, yeah, wipeout, exactly. you're trying to get from one end to the other. Yeah, I don't understand the whole, like, line up the colors and the columns and crush out candies. I, I don't. Well, you're colorblind and you don't like candy, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Pigeon, I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, I know you're moving soon, mm -hmm. uh, but would you be willing to take a trip to play this game if you get picked? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to sign you up. Yeah, I'd do it. Well, would you? Would you, would you play I, Candy I Crush or would you play Double Dare? I do Double Dare, but I couldn't do it because it, it asks for physical agility, and I don't, I can't do that. Uh, that's right, you're a big fat slob now. I forgot. No, Brokeback Mountain, as you oh, call that's right. it. <laughs> and I'm a fat slob. <laughs> oh shit! All right, uh, the Walking Dead was renewed for season eight, even before season seven premiered, October twenty eighth. How is the show not even just renewed till like season ten? <laughs> this shows all I love the Is Walking it written Dead. that far? Yeah, I think I, I think so. there's a bunch of comics. Yeah, well one guy I work with was telling me that he has the Is that the, the guy who goes on the dark net? No, nah, no, different guy. Uh the guy has the <laughs> compendiums, like the pretty much I think he said the comics were up to again, sorry anyone listening if I'm butchering this. I think they're past like hundred and ten cop or um shows comics? or comics, yeah. Like n number one ten or one twenty, whatever it be, but he has like three compendiums, like the hardcover backs that has, I think all of them in one. Yeah, it's got like big clusters of them in there, and he was saying they could easily be up to like season ten worth of stuff already. So, mm -hmm. awesome, I love it. Uh, Cal, why don't you lead, lead us off? Yay, nay, and food pairing. Ooh, food pairing. Well, give us a round back up of what beer is you're drinking. Yeah, this is the um. Again, this is the Trappists Rochefort, uh, number eight, out of Belgium. Uh, food pairing is, this is a tough one, guys. Uh, for whatever reason be, I can go for some kind of white fish. <laughs> Catfish, is that white fish? <sighs> with, uh, it is. With it a is. citrus or finish or no? More of an herb finish? Uh, herb. Some, some okay. sort of lightly battered. White fish with herb, not you know, no lemon on it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, just I'm thinking white fish, okay, fish? Sh shark meat. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a yay. This is this is very good. It's a little multi. I don't know if Kelx is multi or not, but <laughs> I'm nom nom. <laughs> um, I was thinking of uh, oh, it was shark bait from uh, Nemo, right? When they're like, what was that? They were kind of breaking them into the other uh, group, yeah, a little whiff of the blood smell. Those guys. No, yeah. no, no. When he was uh, when he was in the tank in the doctor's office, and they're doing the shark bait. I'm, I'm shark bait. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah. To initiate them. Yeah. I thought you were doing the shark leg. I am a shark. I am a predator, and I do not eat meat. No, no. <laughs> That's funny. Shark. Bait. Right, so you're you're a yay. I'm a definite yay. Okay. Uh, this the mellow monk. It's a lot more carbonated than I was expecting. Oh really? Ah, oh, that's sad. Um, or maybe it's just, I don't know, it's kind of got like a, a sharp taste to it when you first take a sip. That's weird because it's less alcohol. I didn't think it would be as, you know, potent in taste. Yeah, but it, it's light on the tongue. Like it doesn't have like a lot of weight to it at all. Um, the flavor, it's got great flavor to it. But again, it's kind of, I don't know if it's that sharpness right at the beginning of it. Uh-oh. Or if it's the carbonation. What is it? I'll, I'll give it a yay for being what it is. I would buy it again. It's just, it's, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe, maybe if it was a higher alcohol like you guys have. Maybe it was the original Mary Monks. Well, this is Mellow Monks. Yeah, but if it was the original, it'd be okay. Hey, well, that's, that's what I'm thinking with it being Mellow Monks. It doesn't, like the beginning of it doesn't seem so mellow to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, let me try something I'll just try smooth and easy to just sit around and drink. But let, let me go on record here with my number eight. I okay. I am putting it right up there with the Tank Seven Farmhouse Ale. Oh really? shiz! Yeah, I <laughs> I really really like this Belgian ale. I would say it's a top five for me at least, and maybe mm -hmm. maybe in the top three. Okay. You said whoa, whoa, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really smooth and really well balanced. I mean, I could drink a bunch of these, but I'm already getting warm and fuzzy. Yeah, nice. but you uh, your wallet won't appreciate it, will it? <laughs> no, no, they're like eight bucks. Uh, Eight bucks a twelve, 12 ounce, ounce bottle. bottle. Yeah, that's expensive. All right. Uh, well, let's get a refill, Kelk. Let's dig into your wallet, and uh, we'll be back with Let's Talk Game. 
For more from the Loda Couch, check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. If you like me and would like to follow me on Twitter, at Pigeon Peg Leg, and also on Twitch, Pigeon Peg Leg. Pigeon Peg Leg. Hey, this is Scott Chound. If you want to hear more from me, you can check me out on Twitter at Scott Chound underscore LC or on Twitch at Scott Chound. All right, we're back with Let's. Let's. Talk. Talk. Games. 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 I like the Cubs <laughs> getting on those shit now, too. Uh, Finally. Right, let's get started with what we're drinking for this section. Uh, Calc, lead us off. All right. <clears throat> I apologize in advance. I'm going to butcher this thing. No, you don't. Really I don't apologize first. Yeah, don't apologize. Uh, yeah, it's they, just us being American idiots. Because no. it's too late to apologize. <laughs> I'm drinking too a beer late. out of Belgium, out of Essen, Belgium, uh, from the brewery Bruges de Dol Brewers, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and the name is de Dole Uy Beer? Sure. Yes. All right, Mr. French, how do, how do you say this stuff? <laughs> no, sounds good. I sound the same. <laughs> It'd be like, uh, the Dole Orbier. Orbier. Orbier, yeah. Orbier, okay. Brewerage de Dole. Yeah, Brewerage de Dole Brewer. <laughs> Brewer. Brewer. Okay. All right, the cool. Dole Brewers. Oh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 9% alcohol. D Dolly Beer <laughs> Brow Wurridge. <laughs> Pidge, what are you drinking? I'm drinking what you had last segment. Be good. The, okay. <laughs> the Mellow Monks Weyerbacher Eastern PA. It's a pale yellow in color. Yes, I knew it in my brown bottle. It's kind of like a yellow. like a whip beer, like a white ale. Right. Um, and it's uh, four four and a half. Yeah, four and a half percent. I'm drinking the Pepe Nero. Uh, from Goose Island Beer Company out of Chicago, Illinois. Again, sticking with the uh, Belgian style. Oh, uh, Illuminati. I can go for some deep dish pizza too. And it's oh. 6% alcohol. They make some good uh, they make some good beer, Goose Island. Goose Island does? Yeah. I yeah. Actually tried this one yet, but. I have if we get together like we've been talking about, I'll have the uh their farmhouse ale, the Lolita. Lolita. I've, uh, that, see, I this like, one I like more the Sophie. Like, like, the Sophie's good too. This is a it's a Belgian Style farmhouse sale. Yum. Pidge, what'd you play? Uh, I didn't play the boring games like you guys played, but I did play with you Battlefield 1. It's so good. <laughs> it made me pre order it. <laughs> this coming from it's, the guy who is anti Battlefield and pro COD. Pro COD, yes. When, when but, I first met you, Scotchy told me that. He's like, Pigeon will never play Battlefields, they're too slow. It's too, too wide. Big, it's too, too big, wide open. I, I remember the first time I, we played Battlefield Three together, and Celtic was like awesome at it, and I was just like, "This game sucks. I got to run like a half a mile just to get to the action." <laughs> but it seems now that like, you're getting older in your years. No, not that. But like Battlefield Four was kind of the same. But this one seems kind of more fast paced. No, maybe it's just me. I it's th- just, I th- but it's I think it's just it's you. not as fast as Call of Duty or Titanfall. That's yeah, that's a given. Yeah. But I think yeah, I think the maps are just that well laid out that you probably don't go more than fifteen seconds without some. Well, kind the other of... thing I was going to say too, Kelk, is with the updated systems, we're not just running thirty-two v thirty-twos now. Yeah, There's a lot more players on the board. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it was sixteen to sixteen last last gen. This one is thirty-two thirty-two. Yeah, right? we, we were we were oh, on right. a sixty-four okay. player map Six, last night. So right, right, okay, so sixty. For now, thirty-two then, yeah, okay, right. yeah, and uh, so that so might yeah. have been why it felt so big because yeah, no, completely. I remember Chuck when uh, like Pigeon was saying with three, it did feel a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah, there were there were many times we would take a tank or a jeep and we would probably drive for a good thirty seconds before we came in contact <laughs> with somebody. I right. can't. That's just too long for me. I need at least like seven seconds between kills. <laughs> <laughs> Not um, six minute abs. <laughs> I love the weapons though, and I mean, we just started barely buying new weapons. I mean, I think the weapons and, like you said, the speed feels just right. I mean, and the environments and the sound are gorgeous. On top of that, I think all of us have like have different. I mean, we have two medics, two supports, and one assault. And I think somebody else is assault too. Sometimes I think Flans is of Space Flans does the assault class. Well, but I, we was all, fan, I was Space Flans is usually support. 
Yep. He's okay. usually there, support, and I was there I was, was a time where Kelk, myself, and Doom were all playing medic, and then Kelk moved over to support with Dan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then I was assault, and, and I and I did assault. flirt with the with the scout role, which was the sniper. Yeah, no, I was doing that as well, but That's I think tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna flirt between medic and uh, assault with Kelk. Yeah, with Pit. and it, it's yeah. it's tough, but that caliber round hits hard because even even if I didn't get the upper body shot, it, I would do at least like eighty percent damage on him. See I myself, the, I'm best with scout with only looking for people. <laughs> like I can call yeah. them out like <laughs> with the best of them. <laughs> Eagle eye achievement. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm looking for. Hats off though to Doom. He was like fucking Rambo medic. He was <laughs> he was healing everybody and throwing He's down the revived king man. Yeah, band aid yeah. packs to everybody. Dude, he, me and him were like, we were like, he was behind me like all the time, reviving me. Yeah. That's the thing. The medic, I, it, with doing that uh, role, you definitely have to take like the last man in the group position. Yeah, you gotta like not. Look for action. You just right. gotta look for people, and I, I just need action. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did pre-order, and I can't wait for Friday. It's gonna be. So I you guys, not, neither of you guys, because you both pre-ordered, right? Like, yes. Uh, no, I Kyle didn't. Did I didn't. Yeah, I didn't pull the trigger yet. Okay, but Pidge, you didn't pre-order the Pro to get it Tuesday then, or Monday night, or whatever. No, I thought I did. I thought I read something where like any edition that you pre-order because you have EA access, you get it three days early. But okay, I guess I didn't. My trial runs out in like forty-five minutes. So maybe I, I just wait like four hours. Yeah, I got yeah, about I got play- about three hours left. Yeah, I think me and Flans played it one night for about two and a half hours with Doom. Um, but anyway, the, the, it's it's going to be great. The uh, other game I played was Destiny: Rise of Iron. I played mm-hmm. my weekly strikes. They're tough. Those new strikes are tough. They're good though. Uh, yeah, they're at three fifty. So you guys three fifty yet? Mm, three no. three thirty something or three forty eight. Yeah, we got to do some. Uh, we gotta do some uh, like plague lands and stuff, and get some some uh, bounties completed so you can rank up. Okay. And I play a little bit of recore. Got a couple achievements with extracting some cores from enemies. Okay. I finally got the blue gun. I got blue, red, and white. Now. Nice. Yeah, that's the same that I got. Calc, what you guys? Play? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say pigeon might want to pull up a pillow for this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I fell into the. Age of Empires Castle Siege on Windows 10 and uh, Windows Mobile. So it's uh, kind of, well, not kind of, but it's very Clash of Clans uh, type of RTS. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not a, like, it's funny, it's not a, a real time RTS like the old StarCraft and Warcraft and things like that. This is a, uh, you, you select your unit, you select your building and you do your upgrades and it kind of upgrades in real time. Is that a thing? Right, Scotch? Like you have sure. to wait like nine, ten hours for your building to upgrade. Yeah. Like I was just upgrading my one. Um, what is it? My barrack, not my barracks, whatever. Uh, six hours from now, it'll be finished. Yeah. And like when you upgrade the keep your, your main castle, it's like a 12 or 24 hour upgrade. Um, no, I really like it. Um, I I did buy the some gold. Are all based off of uh, your supplies. Yeah, I, I I did buy some gold like a fool. So they they made some microtransaction profit off me. Going big? Uh, no, the Going biggest. Big with your seven dollars? You a white whale? No, I did. I I bought a seven dollar one. That's as big as I went. I didn't do the. Uh, what was that five hundred gold? Uh, thousand gold. It was six ninety nine. Was twelve hundred gold? I think. Twelve hundred gold. Okay. Yeah. What was the biggest purchase? Was it twenty nine ninety nine or something? Like, yeah, I thought it was up in there, up in that thirty to forty dollar range. Yeah, but I mean that's just like stupid money. But it, it, it's you know what? As you play it, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. Do, don't you almost get a little bit of that? Uh, like when you're at the casino with the <laughs> playing the the slot machine, the digital ones where you're like touching and you're like spin more, spin more. Or like you know, add more maximum currency. I was getting that effect. Like I was building something, and it would say two and a half hours to complete. And when you click it, it says for twenty four gold you can finish now. And I'm like, well, what the hell? I got twelve hundred gold coins. I'll just finish it now, real quick. Yeah, no, I, I do that. <laughs> Every once in a while, I usually get it down to where it's like seven, maybe ten at most. Yeah, just because I haven't bought any gold. Well, but, yeah. uh, imagine when you're sitting on like 1,200 gold coins. Everything's like, ah, what the heck? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean now now that I'm getting like the six gold coins a day, 
it's a little bit easier for me to be like, okay, yeah, I can spend that six or seven coins just to finish it up. But yeah, I mean, so what are your so what are your thoughts on? I know we briefly talked a little bit like offline. What's your thoughts on its initial impression versus where it stands now, five days into playing it? I'm. I was super hyped with it when I first got it. Uh, like you said, I downloaded it on everything that it was Windows. I had it on my laptop, I had it on my work computer, and I had it on my phone. Uh, I've taken to just play, pr- primarily playing it now on my phone because within the first uh, two days, I guess, of playing it, it was really quick. Like you're building a lot of your things. Yep, um, yep. You know, you're building your walls, you're building your uh, your barracks, you're you know you're you're getting some troops out and about and stuff like that. Uh, now it's come into like that time consuming kind of uh, grind where you're just kind of waiting for your supplies to kind of, um, you know, amass to where you can finally do like a level five uh, upgrade. And then the upgrade takes eight, like you said, maybe 10 hours, six hours, something like that. Yeah. Yep. So it's definitely slowed down. And a I, whole lot. I would agree with that. I think it hit that it's hit that point now where it is slow and tedious, but you're yeah. also now scratching the easy to play difficult to master type of thing because a lot of the people we attack i notice it's the way that you lay out your castle and your walls it's where you locate your stockpiles it's it's knowing you know you gave me the pointer it's knowing to get in and get out quick and get the get the resources but don't really focus on taking down the castle and and cut cut your loss while you can like wave the white flag when you can yeah, that's a lot of what I've been doing lately just because I'm like, okay, I need resources more than I need like the, the prizes that come along with it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is nice getting that gold chest with the uh, castle. Yeah. Yeah, and again, just for explanation, if, um, you know, you, you're building your own castle and all the extras and stuff that go with it, but also when you're doing this, you're building up your own militia and then you can go out onto uh, different servers or the servers of this and search out other people playing the game uh, through Windows and attack their castles. Yep. to destroy them or like we were just saying once you get to a certain extent maybe it's just going and getting the resources that they're mining for yourself and then bringing them back and kind of ignoring the castle yep and two other points real quick you can be in alliance with somebody which we are yep and you have peace treaties so if you are attacked um it gives you about eight hours of peace treaty where it allows you to recover your resources but i have noticed the minute you go out and do the attacking, you waive your peace treaty timeline. So does it cost something for the peace treaty? No, it just kicks in. If you're attacked, it automatically kicks in. If you initiate the attacks because you're out there getting greedy, trying to get resources, you're not under a peace treaty. Okay. Okay. Did you um, do any heroes yet? I do have one hero. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. That kind of uh, sums up what I played as well. So uh, let's move right into the news. Pidge, you still awake? But huh? What? Okay. Sony News. Sony Interactive Entertainment is planning to release five or more mobile games around the end of March 2018. Holy crap. What movies coming out around then, Pitch? Uh, no, Green Eggs and Ham come out on Netflix with Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, the games will be based on pre existing PlayStation properties. Properties? Okay. Yeah, PlayStation. As well properties. as, as uh, older games that haven't been ported to its current hardware. Uh, the games will also be connectable to consoles, similar to the PlayStation Vita's crossplay functionality. Uh, Pidge, are there any games that you'd like to see Sony come in with this? I think I think maybe like a, like a Crash Bandicoot or a, like a like a Rayman Legends type of game for the iOS. Mhm. That, that and would other be systems. Cool. I could see that, yep. Or like an Ape Escape where you got to catch the monkeys, <laughs> the net I'll throw one comment on top of that, like like Scotch and I were just talking about an IP uh, to do some sort of Clash of Clans or Age of Empire style game. Why not use? Oh my it? gosh! Why not do a mobile kill zone? You know the kill zone IP. What kind of like a enemy like a XCOM? Uh, no, just like a RTS base building. So like you have your kill zone, you have like the good guys versus the rebels or whoever it be. You've got your main base and you build up your barracks and your legions and your. You go out and make attacks and stuff like that. Get away from the whole first person with kill zone and do some form of an RTS with it. My idea is better. <laughs> All right, Calc, I'll, put, I'll put this to you. Since Nintendo is already uh, on the mobile uh, and Sony's planning to, uh, do you think Xbox will be jumping on the bandwagon? 
I think they'd like to, but I don't think they will. I mean, they're they're having a hard enough time with the the Windows mobile platform as it is. I mean, if they were to do it, that would be the the platform that they would try to push it on. You know, maybe maybe a big name IP like a like a Halo or a, a Gears or something like that. Yeah, but, but I don't, I can't see them trying to get their their game. The, let me let me correct that. One other game that might do really well on iOS and Android, if they were to push it into mobile, would be Ori and the Blind Forest. Now, does <laughs> our Age of Empires kind of um, fill that? mobile play well, even though because it's cross play with the you know the pc and stuff as well i guess you could say that because i think microsoft does own the rights to the age of empires so they already are on mobile and mm-hmm. and we you have you know you and i both i think play their hexic game so they, yep. are, they are involved in the mobile but once again like all their games tend to be on the windows platform because it's an xbox live uh game you can get achievements on your windows mobile device that counts that counts towards your gamer score on your xbox so yeah if if i was going to do an android and ios crossover like i like pigeon was saying with the other games it would have to be some kind of platformer yeah uh sony is already selling their vr headset for a profit that's that's pretty remarkable i mean because the what the the rift and the vive i mean I, i think they're higher end I yeah, I was going to at a loss. I was going to say that's like an apples to orange comparison, but that's still props to Sony for, you know, getting something I mean, out. Had, yeah, they have the user base already, so and more power you to them. That, you think that's the plus side for uh, them uh, on their sales numbers? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, if if they were in Xbox, you know, in Microsoft's position, I mean, still selling out a profit is good. I mean, a user base, and, you know, it's a, 20, 20 plus million is still a really good user base for two years, two, three Plus, years. Like in comparison to the other two, like the Rift and stuff that you were talking about, I mean, you have to have a beefier computer to do so, where yeah, it's, it's just a nice, easy option if you already have the PlayStation, so it's yeah, going to be an easier sell. And I think it'll probably have better games for it, too, because it has the Sony backing. And I'm wondering if uh, it being a cheaper unit isn't almost a better option for Sony as a whole, because if you have some breakage issues, you're going to have repurchases. Yeah, well, there there's already issues about like screen, uh, excuse me, shifting and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Right. It's only been out for what less than a week. Yeah, see about the recalls and stuff. Like hey, that. I want to throw yeah. something out real quick without getting no, you don't. too blown into it. Since we're on Sony, and I won't talk about Microsoft yet. Hololens. Uh, I did see an article uh, that had to do with the future of Sony. I don't know what you guys think. So the article pointed out that I guess this past quarter, 72 or 78% of the profit from the quarter was Sony PlayStation was specifically PlayStation. Yeah. They said so much is riding now on the PlayStation brand that if a year from now, we'll just say they have the advantage right now, but if a year from now they face some kind of struggle, with new consoles coming out, it could be big trouble for Sony. Well, with hmm. the Sony Pro Pro, PS4 the, Pro Pro, the Pro Pro, or if people don't adopt the Pro Pro and say the Scorpio comes out and flips the table back the other way to how the 360 was outselling PS3, I don't, I don't, I don't see. I see PlayStation still holding on, <clears throat> unless, so you unless think things could be so so if they come out with the Pro Pro. <laughs> I don't know, but that's, I mean, if I was running a business and wake me up before you go, go, yeah. <laughs> um, if I had 78% of my eggs, uh, sitting in that basket, it, yes, it is scary, but their TVs are so expensive. They're, they're just okay. Their phone business is gone. Their, their yeah. computer yeah. business is gone. Is gone. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they have other stuff in Japan that we don't really deal with, but yeah, they sell insurance. It is, I think that's their big thing. Yeah, and it, it's it is scary really? that. Yeah, I think Sony's well, a big insurance company. Crazy. That three quarters of their business in the PlayStation, but it's, I mean, it's steamrolling ahead, man. It, it doesn't show any slowing down. Exactly, and I, I brought it up because of the VR talk. I mean, I'm I'm kind of happy that, again, it's it's a lower grade compared to the Rift and uh, you know Oculus, but or I should say the HTC Vive, um, and Oculus, but uh. Yeah, props to them. I mean, it's it's a good price point, and I heard it's got some pretty decent games. Yeah. 
Microsoft News. Halo Wars 2 brings an ace card to its RTS games. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I, they, I think it just came out on the news.xbox.com or the, you know, the Xbox wire. Basically, they're, they've added a, a new mode to RTS gaming called Blitz. And this might be something more up Pigeon's alley because it's no nope, it's an rts, RTS. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i knew that was coming they, they said people that play rts are looking for a little bit more um instant gratification a lot more excitement you know quicker fighting and shorter game Just time foil packs so they're going to foil packs it's gonna they're basically creating a a card game i guess one of these like you know magic and what's that card game from the witcher Gwent, Gwent, yeah, Gwent, and Hearthstone. So you have Witcher, so you should know. Yeah. So basically, you can gather these ca- special cards or foil packs through the campaign that you basically can build your own card deck, and you can play this Blitz mode, and the RTS action and fighting happens out in real time in front of you, and you play as the commander, slapping down these different power cards. And it it calls in the troops and stuff, so you don't you don't have to do the the barracks building and the resource gathering and the stuff like that. So it's is pretty it, it's a pretty cool it, idea. It's like a RTS. Is it pay to win? Uh, I don't think it. I didn't see anything about the microtransaction, get better cards type of thing. Huh. But right, it says in this mode, uh, players will create decks of twelve of uh, 12 from card packs earned by playing through Halo Wars 2 campaign as well as daily chal- challenges. Uh, every leader will have access to this shared pool of cards that complement their specific play style. Each leader can have up to three different decks and each card features a unit that can deploy on the battlefield in real time throughout the course of the match. Yeah, so it's 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 kind of like a uh, if you were like playing God, looking down on a battlefield, and you just keep slapping down these card resources, and they which is kind of that conversation we had about with um, the mobile option in the division, wasn't it? Kind of having that little mode where you can kind of come in and see an overall of the oh, map. Oh yeah, that's and right. Stuff and, yeah, you can bring in like a drone and drop stuff on the other enemies. Yeah. Right. Yep. And yep. then they scratched it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I still want. I'm not going to play it. Yeah, I didn't play Halo Wars 1. Yeah. Speaking of Halo, man, I got to play Halo uh, Assault. I keep on forgetting I have that yeah, twin-stick shooter. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and, and Halo 4. And, and Halo, Halo Wars 2 looks very much like the twin-stick shooters. Yeah, but it's not. It's real-time strategy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got to beat Halo 5 on Legendary. Yes, Scott. yeah, we have to do that. And you're yeah, supposed to play... We're pretty far through it. Yeah, we're at like... We have two or three missions left, and plus we got to... <clears throat> Excuse me, you got <clears throat> Oh my goodness. You gotta do the um Master Chief collection with me. Oh yeah, yeah, true. You guys were a little bit further ahead of me on that, weren't you? No, I, I was just on Halo one so because we were doing on legendary and it was like so hard. Oh, uh, okay. I figure we'd just do everything on normal or you know, heroic. Right, right. Xbox One S best selling console in America now for three months straight. That's the Tour- little tiny asteroid at the very bottom. <laughs> yeah. Too early to call it a comeback. Um, oh, up. Yeah, I mean, I think it's early, but I think it shows the the price point and uh, I guess the color. It should have been a white console. Um, no, have you seen that Battlefield one? The battle, console? it looks so hot. That and the, I'm, the storm I might, gray. <laughs> I'm I might buy it. Calc likes Just all the specialty one. ones. He likes the gears one. He's like the Battlefield one. I do. I need to hit the lottery. I'm go- <laughs> Dude, I got a. I uh, I'm moving to Texas and I got a bigger house. And I have two floors now, so mm-hmm. I might be uh, put one in the office and one, one in the. Uh, no, I'll just get two. Or me, I'll just wait oh, for you Scorpio. Have two? I don't know. It it does look good, but yeah, uh, three months in a row. I mean, they definitely. Uh, I remember they were saying a couple of years ago, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So. Yeah, it's just PR talk. I think they have they have the momentum, but I like this this generation. However, however long it lasts, I don't think they'll catch up. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, the Scorpio is a clean wipe, and let's start from there. Speaking of Scorpio, will it be the new uh, king in the Game of Thrones, based on the lack of excitement from the PS4 Pro announcement? I don't know. That's a good call. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people were saying the PS4 Pro didn't really do too much for them. They were saying like, "We'll just keep our PS4s," but 
Yeah, but we don't know the all the specs on the Scorpio, do we? We know some hardware. We know what they said, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, are they going to stick to that, you think? Six teraflops, right, Scotchy? Yeah. I, I mean, Scotchy just asked the key question. Everybody knows that they said six teraflops. Do they come out? A year, a year from now, and say surprise, it's eight teraflops. You know, right. because supposedly it's at six teraflops, it's still going to be fifty percent faster than the PS4 Pro. So, do they come out with another two teraflops or whatever the magic number is, and try to? I think it'll just be whatever the software or the uh, hardware is up to at that point, won't it? Yeah, pretty much. And and what, well, not what the hardware is up to, but what they can offer it at that realistic price point that phil spencer said because he said it's going to be priced no different than a premium console we've seen before so that's mm. that puts me into the this thing's not going to be more than 499 or maybe 549 mm. i think 499 will be the, the top tier anything above that is going to scare people because the original xbox with the connect right it was 499 yep 49. yeah that's going to say it that 549 it's getting into those uh yeah. Neo Geo costs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Absolutely. Nintendo news. Uh, Nintendo unveils the NX. <laughs> Kidding. Actually, no nothing. B- breaking news. Be the first among to discover the NX. Watch the preview trailer tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. Tomorrow what day? Tomorrow, Th- which is Thursday the 20th. 20th. Yes, yeah, so we're recording this on a Wednesday night. Yep. Yes. And then uh, some of the responses on Twitter was, holy fuck, holy shit. I want you inside me about time. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> just just a big. Uh, wah, 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 in wah, in other kidding. words, this is Pigeon's Twitter feed. <laughs> yeah. It says. Oh, this is what you wrote? Fuck me, daddy. Daddy, <laughs> daddy. Preview. You know, so. No Nintendo, it's probably going to be so vague and not even worth everyone's hype i think now what if it comes out and it's some mario game that just melts like melts your face i mean are you gonna go pre- I'll, pre-order, I'll go pre-order at a GameStop? yeah because there's already <laughs> you can already uh we'll get into the top but you can pre-order the red dead redemption 2 already too okay that's ridiculous Holy crap uh, but, platform news but real quick i made a promise on reddit i said if nx gets announced on the 21st of october i will give away a quantum break code for pc or multiple 3ds codes Ooh. For games, mm-hmm. and it was the twentieth. So, uh, so that means you don't have to give it away. It's just the twenty. Sorry, I wanted to. I want to. I want to give away this PC code. All right. Uh, well, I guess it's out there then. Maybe I'll uh, how, put how it out there that? anyway. How do you go about that? I uh, know. I'll ask Reddit or Celtic. <laughs> okay. Multi-platform news: uh, the greatest four-player co-op video games, according to IGN. Um, I'm just going to ask if you guys agree and you let me know for these, okay? Mm-hmm. Left 4 Dead. Yes. Yes. Jamestown. Never heard of it. No idea what it is. <laughs> Payday. Never played it. Yeah, same thing. Never played it. Okay. GTA Online. Yes. Yes. Diablo 3. Yes. Yes. Halo 3. Yes. Yes. Borderlands 2. Absolutely. Never played it, but yeah, you guys hyped it up. Super Mario 3D World. Amazing, yes. Okay, yep. And Gauntlet. Yes, uh, I, I remember. Old school arcade Gauntlet? Old school arcade, yes. I def- four, four people at the arcade sticks, yeah. 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 That's, I, that's I the saying. thing that caught me as weird with the four-player co-op Super Mario 3D World. I know you can do it, but I never played it multi- you know, that big a co-op before. I didn't know you, much- you never played it with your son or with... No, I uh, did, just Nick? a two-player, but not four. Yeah, but just even with two-player, it's... Just imagine double that on top of that. You know? Right, but I'm trying to remember if it was a pain in the butt with, you know, once you kind of got off screen, if you had to wait for the other person or if they automatically just appear next to you and how annoying that would be to the other player. Yeah, you have you have to wait. Right. You do have to wait, but I was I remember playing with my daughter. This was like, what, two years ago it came out, I think. And, I mean, it's know, a great game, no matter what. Oh my gosh. It's it incredible. I, I haven't beat it 100% yet. It, I was I expecting to see something about like a, uh, you know, the Mario Kart or something like that on there. Yeah, that, that's a good yeah. call. Actually, Mario Kart would be a really. Yeah, good... I was just gonna say. Can you think of anything else? And I, I can't really think of anything on the top of my head except maybe like a FIFA game or something. Mm. But I think they're trying to stay away from racers and sports games. Sports so games. kind of obvious. Yeah, it's the easy yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah. I, I got one. Evolve. 
<laughs> Good one, Calc. Nice. We're going to label in the show title as Evolve. All right, Pidge, you brought this up. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 officially announced fall 2017. It sounds like yeah. uh, tomorrow is going to be the big day for trailers. Cause sounds like Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming to NX. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. That would be, With a, mass, be crazy. That would be impressive. Mass Effect Andromeda. Watch that be like a uh, you know ex- exclusive with NX. Oh, oh my god! You know how it many was... consoles they'd sell? It comes pack pack in with the system. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know how many consoles they'd sell? And the and the, and the console's red. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. With, Cal, with bullet holes in it. Cal, go on Reddit and say Red Dead Redemption Two is a an <laughs> exclusive to NX. NX exclusive. Okay. And and the Wii Mote looks like a revolver. <laughs> Do it, do it right now. Uh, well, speak, right, speaking like, of Reddit, real quick, somebody said I think it was two or three days ago when the remember remember the tweets came out two days like one day apart. The first day was kind of like a little teaser image of just the sunset right. and, and like the cowboy, and people were like, "Holy shit, what's it gonna be?" Well, some dude on Reddit posted, he's like, "If they announce Red Dead Two is a real thing this week." I'm going to set a camera up and take a shit and suck on it. Like, and basically the next day on Twitter, they, they said it's official. It's coming out fall 2017. He better suck on that shit. This guy, <laughs> this guy's Reddit thread is like 500 replies deep going pucker up, buddy. Cause we want to see it. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you really want to see out. a dude suck on a, de- a turd. No, I do not. Oh but gosh. it was funny. I mean, he, the responses were pretty good. Did you see the um, the Dead Rising Four mock? Yes. Of the Red Dead Redemption. Did, and did funny. you see the Recore one? No. There, there was one from uh, Recore team. They said, you know, congratulations on your announcement, and they did the silhouettes, the jewel, and the and the different frames walking in the sunset. Nice. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's right, hyped for it. The, uh, with Red Dead, um, they're saying is there's going to be a heavy emphasis on the multiplayer online, like GTA Five. Oh yeah, it'll be it'll be a big single player campaign, and then I'll have this Red Dead Redemption online. Do you? And, uh, yeah. Do you think? Cult, so. Well, I mean, you guys played the GTA single player. I didn't, so I can't really speak. Do you think they're gonna shortchange the single player in no. in, in no. trying to push people to the multiplayer, or they'll give the best no. of both? They'll yeah, give the best that. of both. Rockstar doesn't do that. Rockstar goes in. Well, they they, mean, they made like what two billion dollars profit, so I think they got yeah. enough money for the team. Yeah, you on know, every single game they do, they they go all out. I mean, yeah, there's I mean, that's not one hell of a story that they put in a GTA Five. Yeah, I just wish, I the hope campaign. the campaign could be like four player co op. That would be awesome. That would be incredible. Yeah, if they could work that together. Hey, I, real yeah. real quick while we're on this talk, so everything's real quick with you, and it's not. Well, I'll just interject real quick. Uh, real quick, there it is. Real quick. With <laughs> with my surgery, which single player campaign do you guys want to see me play through? The Witcher, GTA Five. GTA Five Ooh. or Ooh. Tomb Raider? Scratch Tomb Raider. You already did the one. Yeah, uh, one of the other two. I would do. Uh, I would do GTA Five. Are you going to stream it? No, I'll, I'll be right, drunk. On, I'll be drugged up. <laughs> Who cares? That's the best part. <laughs> I'll be on. Per- I'm just gonna go over here and get Percocets. Trevor to punch this whore. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but if there's a huge single player game, should I play GTA Five or The Witcher? GTA 5. I think you'll have more fun with GTA 5. Yeah. For for my enjoyment, I'd like to tell you to play The Witcher just so I could see how long it actually lasts. But I <laughs> yeah, think but for your you... enjoyment, GTA 5 would be a better game for you. Yeah. Okay. GTA 5, the story, you don't really got to pay attention to it. Witcher, I'm sure you got to pay real good attention to it to figure out stuff. True. Yeah, in, the, the, in the GTA 5, uh, I can play during the day while my son's at school because that's the only yeah. time I'll get to play it. Oh, fuck you, boo. All right. Last, last talking point. Uh, Festival of the Lost is coming back to Destiny according to a leaked list of rewards, quests, and new masks. On Reddit. Uh, is this are you the, still uh, hanging on to your uh, box of raisins from Iris Moon? Is this the, the Halloween stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I used to that have that. Cool. I had that jack-o'-lantern head for like the longest time. I think I still have one of those. I just found that I had 16 bags of Festival of Goodies that I opened and they're all jack-o'-lantern heads. So now I have like 15. <laughs> <laughs> you just make the, ja- the Halloween noises the whole time. Yeah, there's a kiosk that you can uh, you you can dismantle your mask that you're having in your vault, so okay. you can always just go back and pick them up. And also, um, the box of raisins 
if you once the you know the festival of the lost comes back if you break them down you get a bunch of silver dust hmm. which is the new currency for a rise of iron oh, nice all right sorry taking a sip uh beer thoughts Pitch, please love. um i'm actually liking it scotchy uh, but like you said it's a little it's, it's like a little bitter has that little bitter taste to it it's um, like a sharp taste right up front right yeah right up front maybe it's like you lick a penny real quick yeah that's probably it, is it analogy. carbonated like crazy I don't think so. It's just that sharpness. It's like kind of a, I don't want to say think, an IPA kind of tart, but it's maybe there, a sour. There definitely kind is of like, a, like a bitter tartness sour really? tartness to it. Right. But it, compared to the Merry Monks, Merry Monks is like super smooth. Right. And that's what I was to... expecting with the Mellow Monks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. But um, Merry Monks is definitely a lot better. Mm-hmm. And I actually had the Sour Monk. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, or Sour Monkey or whatever it is. And that's actually... Uh, I think Kelk would like it, but this one, this one's good. It's, it's you know, it's probably about like, like a three out of five or something like that. Okay, Kelk. Um, I'm gonna actually say a nay Wait, on what, this. What beer are you drinking? Excuse me, drinking. This is the was it Oi beer, Oi Bay. The D Dolly Oi beer from Brewers D Dolly Brewers. There you go. <laughs> you wanted him to say it again. Didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. He was avoiding it. Yeah, it's compared to the Trappist that I just had. <laughs> you should have saved that for last, probably. Um, really, not much of a comparison because the first <laughs> sip I had of this was it was just way too sweet. It did level out. It got a little smoother. But it's still, it's got this some kind of taste just hanging around longer than I want, and it's still a little too sweet for me. Um, I'm gonna say an A, and I think my food pairing, I just, I want like some kind of cheese on a cracker, like a cheese, okay. like a cheese platter. Okay. Dude, I everything's gonna be held up to this trap is beer now, and everything's gonna be terrible. <laughs> and uh, my Pepe Nero. It's it's kind of what I was expecting out of the Mellow Monk. It's a, a, a lot smoother, right? Um, so I, yeah, I'm I'm a yay on it. It's a good Belgian. Um, is it flavorful? Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's it's just not not as much as the Mellow Monks, but it's kind of more of what I, of what I was expecting. I just wish I had a little bit more of the Mellow Monk kind of flavoring on the aftertaste to it. Okay, but it's smooth and it, it you know it's got a nice taste to it. It's not bad in any way hmm. I don't know I, I almost want to say nay just because of that reason but yeah do it anyway. pull the trigger pull the trigger oh uh, yeah go ahead put me down for nay then yeah. all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right uh let's get a refill or new beer and uh, we're back to the brown breeze section oh, sorry yeah the brown breeze section of the show <sighs> For more from the Loda Couch, check us out on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Hey, if you like me, follow me on Twitch and Twitter at Pigeon Peg. Yeah! <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Cataclysmic Doom. Make sure to check me out on Twitch and Twitter at Cataclysmic Doom. Hey, this is Scotch Hound. If you want to hear more from me, you can check me out on Twitter at Scotch Hound underscore LC or on Twitch at Scotch Hound. All right, we're back at the Brown Breeze section of the show. Uh, the Two idiots have gone ahead and gotten themselves uh, set up for destruction with um, a good drunken evening. So why don't I let them... We'll start with Pigeon. I have to eat something so my belly can get full of food before I get super crunk. But I am drinking the Dogfish Head Fort, okay. which is a Belgian-style ale. Ageable ale. From Milton, Delaware. It's like a reddish-orange color, and it's they don't know the exact amount, but it's 16 to 17% alcohol. I think my wife's going to be really mad at me tomorrow. <laughs> I'm drinking the Scaldus. It's uh, from the brewery Brassier Dubison. It's a Belgian ale out of Belgium. And was that your French accent, too? That was my it's... French. Definitely French. <laughs> uh, it's amber color, like copperish, uh, 12% alcohol. And I stuck with the Pepe Nero. Loser. I did, yeah. I, got, I only got the two. I got a six-pack of the Weyerbacher and a four-pack of the Pepe. So. All right. Uh, right on the diarrhea of the mouth. Diarrhea of the mouth. Uh, feeding cows seaweed could slash global 
global greenhouse gas emissions, researchers say. They discovered that adding a small amount of dried seaweed to a cow's diet can reduce the amount of methane that cow produces by up to 99%. What? Holy crap. Uh, we started with 20 species of seaweed, and we very quickly narrowed that down to one that really stands, uh, really stand out. Sorry, one really stand out species of red seaweed. Professor Denise says, "That's is it D E space N Y S." Yeah. Okay. The species of seaweed is called okay. Uh, asparagopsis. Asparagopsis. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So asparagus. Yeah. And uh, JCU researchers have been actively collecting it off the coast of Queensland. So hmm. let me guess. Pretty soon they're going to say that there's a shortage of red seaweed and I the world's doomed. I yes. was going to say, let's get into the business of cultivating and harvesting uh, red seaweed in indoor greenhouses and we can make a profit. Or something. Oh, we'll just yeah. do uh, farm, farm raised red seaweed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, exactly. there you go. But it, that's crazy. 99% of the gas cut. Methane, yeah. And we, we, we've we had many talks about the methane out of cow farts is like the big culprit. Yeah, there, yeah and there was a, a company, right, that was trying to cut down the methane for like a brewery or something like that? Yeah, yeah. When cows are really, so, the, cows are really the, the big issue. Wait a minute. Let me let me understand this. So these guys feed cow, feed a bunch of cows seaweed, and then they collect the shit and measure the methane. Mm, oh, mm, or they I don't put know how like you do a, that. I think they have to put them in a room because the methane is in parts. So it's really the gas put, that does, not that's coming off of the manure. They put like a like a net around their butt and catch the fart juices or the fart air. <laughs> Well, obviously not a not a net because it has holes. It's got to be a. Well, you get them wearing a diaper with like a balloon on the on the maybe back it's end like, of it, so it blows up as they pass wind. Or maybe it's like a fiber optic and it measures the methane. <laughs> Stick a gazoo up their ass with a balloon on it. <laughs> do the cows uh, write consent to do this experiment? Yes, one hundred percent. So do you they give think, it the hoops approval? Do you think this dried seaweed will affect the flavor of your next fillet? Probably. Probably. McDonald's won't be happy about this. Might actually make it a little better, though, instead of all that corn-fed crap that comes out of the Midwest. <laughs> Makes it meatier, though. Milk from Tasmania Devil Tasmanian Devils could offer up a useful weapon against antibiotic-resistant superbugs. <laughs> uh, according to an Australian researcher, or, so, to researchers, sorry, that marsupials' milk contains important peptides that appear to be able to kill hard-to-treat infections, including MRSA, uh, says a Sydney University team. Hmm. So, two things. One that reminds me of when you say the uh, peptides, and the uh, uh, what was the other thing? But the the one the one thing with peptides was from Total Recall when the guys like convulsing <laughs> and the black lights like forget a doctor, get this man some pepto baseball. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like snapping out. Oh yeah. yeah the yeah. Other, other thing, Tasmanian Devil, uh, the sound he makes from the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> our kids are going to start talking like that regularly yeah if they start drinking it speaking of uh, there's going to be new forms of milk for kids to put in their cereals there's cow's milk goat's milk and now devil's milk mm-hmm. <laughs> that just sounds cow, awesome we... devil's milk cow, it come red? For it? yeah well, I was actually raised on goat milk so yeah are you serious is that why you have all the issues with your bones I'm uh I was on, you... very lactose intolerant as a child so my mom put me on goat milk you know how long it takes me to edit the shows to get that oh, 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 out of the other uh, thing? <laughs> mm. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> That's why his bones are all breakable. <laughs> he sprained his ankle on a rock, and now he has to get like five surgeries to repair a bone. Right. Oh my god! All right, a new man found out that his 15-year-old stepdaughter was sexting her boyfriend. Per, uh, and proceeded to download the evidence to bring it to the school and the police to ask them to intervene. Here's like, I guess what kind of what any parent would do besides just talking to your daughter. But 
Now okay. the da- now the dad is convicted uh, of child pornography ch- or on <laughs> child pornography charges and placed on the sex offenders registry. <laughs> Despite the judge's understanding exactly why the man held on to the images. So okay. wait, he goes to Belize and goes to the school and say, "Listen, my daughter is, my stepdaughter is sending these explicit images to her boyfriend, and I I need this to stop." First of all, give her, tell, cut off the cell phone, Bill. I was going to say, yeah, p- pigeon, a father of, of, you know, two girls. Nothing but vaginas in my house. Yeah. <laughs> How would, I mean, the last thing I think you would be doing is saving the pictures. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. You, you'd go mm-hmm. about this a much different way. Well, again, oh, why, like Pigeon said, why not? First thing you do is just, okay, you have no, no more phone privileges. Or, or then maybe she'll rebel and go out and just have sex with everybody. Well, yeah, she could. But, I mean, no, you're the parent. You you set the law. You cut off the phone yeah. and all the other you're not You're not raising girls. No. You don't care about right, what so your boys do. There's, there's no suggestion of any exploitation of the pictures by anybody, uh, real Judge Jane Patrick, over in Australia. Uh, you made no attempt to conceal the images. In fact, you were so concerned that you contacted the authorities about the images. So having pled guilty, uh, the guy now has to register as a sex offender for eight years. He's like, so, so I, I may or may not have taken out a billboard image of my daughter. So wait a minute. So maybe let's take the creepy part of the story out of it and say that he was actually trying to what he thought was the right thing to do. And now he has eight years as a sex offender. Yeah, and, and it doesn't seem like anything happened with the other two. No, I guess sex and not illegal, if the is boyfriend it? Was, no, but I'm wondering if he was, you know, of age and she was underage to where it could be considered something like that. Mm, that's true. I was going to say, what's that angle there if in I Australia? Like, can, can he nail the guy for underage? Wait a minute. She's 15. 15 year olds go or 15 year olds. Right. But it could have been an 18 year old boy. No now. way. Girl, 15 year old girls don't do that. They don't go for older guys. Yeah, ever. Yeah. Good luck. Right. I'm fucked. All right. Questions from listeners. <laughs> Hello. Uh, our first question comes from Jersey Six Pack <laughs> at Jersey Six Pack. <laughs> uh, I'm getting ripped into shape for the uh, summer because everyone knows now's the time to do it. So when summer comes, I'll be juiced, tan, jacked, and smooth like a newborn baby's ass. Because I I shave everything. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. But turns out half of men admit to trimming and shaving their legs. You guys manning up and shaving your legs? <laughs> I bet you Kelk did in high school or something like that. No, he thought he could he get like some kind of air into that. Makes like, him faster edge. when he was running football back then. <laughs> yeah, that's why he did it. No, he wanted to try up for the swim team and then it wind up for the football team on the bench. <laughs> I, I, I did get my legs shaved up to uh, my mid ankle for taping for football. <laughs> you mean for and then when the they bench, came right? back in, they were twice as long and dark. Yeah, exactly. Is that, is that really is that happen? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Even shaved, though they shave my ankles. No, even though they say that it comes in twice as fast and twice as thick, it's not true. It still seems like it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, so, anybody else? Calc's Kel- like hair is, I think, light enough that it doesn't even look like there's any hair there. <laughs> Although he's kind of covered like a gorilla. <laughs> like a Sasquatch. <laughs> it's an exactly. albino gorilla. It's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a completely blonde. <laughs> I'm like, Ginger ha- gorilla. like Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, pitch. <laughs> You did for volleyball? <laughs> no, I never did for Maybe volleyball. Extra umps. I didn't even manscape until college. <laughs> uh, no, I don't shave my legs. I'm I'm lucky if I manscape. I, you know, my my the most shaving I do is usually on my face. I was gonna say, look at the and beard. Even that's kind of a black. Look at the right beard. Now. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't exactly. manscape. Damn. <laughs> Scotchy's like '80s Playgirl. <laughs> <laughs> Deb Sully loves it that I way. <laughs> Deb Sully probably '80s Playboy. <laughs> Kelk, you better not be muting your mic. <laughs> yes, oh yeah. Coke phase. I thought seventies was Coke phase. Eighties was just like mega bush. Uh, I don't know. You'd know better than I would there, Jersey six pack. I mean pigeon pack like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well thank you for the question. Uh at Jersey Six Pack. Our next question comes from at 
Mars Yeti. <laughs> How long did Elon Musk say it would take uh, for you to get to Mars to see me? I have a candle lit and waiting for you. <laughs> Please hurry. <laughs> All right. Um, this how long is did he say it was about to take us to get there? Three months, I think. <laughs> From Does, now? Doesn't he want people there? What year did he set? 2025? I thought it was sooner than that. I thought it was like 2020. Was it, was it 2020? Either way, either way, you go in there and get some hot can of wax when you die in this tent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god that, that is great that's a crazy expectation i mean now is he going to be going on an electric shuttle <laughs> yeah the, oh, he's gonna have a, hi- a hyperloop built from mars to here <laughs> oh my god you'll exactly. get there you'll get there in like seven minutes what was what did he say like you can get from like the tip of california to the bottom in like less than 40 minutes with the hyperloop oh, or something hyperloop? like that yeah Oh my god, that's gosh. ridiculous! But again, it's a it's a one way thing. You don't have multiple stops. It's like okay, I need to be going to San Diego from San Francisco or something like that. But can you imagine if that was all across the U.S.? Like you can get from California to what just East Coast to West Coast in like three hours. That, can you imagine the different? Awesome. Uh, you know, how many different tracks would you need though? Because it's again, <sighs> there's no stopping at like Pittsburgh and then at St. Louis and then at like Colorado Springs and you know there's. It's just straight shot from here to California, here to L.A. It's like New York to L.A. You, you, nah, there's got to be some stops. Yeah, you would need multi-rails and like merge-on lanes or something like that. Right. If Donald Trump's president, we would have it. <laughs> right, Cal? Hyperloops everywhere. Top of all the walls. On top of all the walls. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you for the question at Mars Yeti. Roar. Yeah. Our next question comes from at here. Take my money. Uh, do you guys ever spend money on extra DLC for games? Multiplayer add-ons, skins, campaign extras, whatever. Yeah, I, th- I think I pretty much covered that earlier th- with this episode with the uh, Age of Empires buying the gold. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was sleeping. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely... I, I'll buy uh, every once in a while on an occasion. I'll buy maybe you know, five to 10 bucks on a microtransaction and definitely buy a DLC like, like destiny. Destiny's gotten all my DLCs. Yeah. About division division. Yeah. I bought that as a bundle. So yeah, I mean, they got all my money day one. They better release that um, patch soon. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I think I get division and, uh, destiny, destiny. DLC. Yeah, I did. I don't do a lot of microtransactions. I'm not big on that. Yeah. I don't do microtransactions. I, um, I do do, I do do DLC. I like you guys, Division <laughs> and Destiny, but I also bought the uh, Dead Rising DLC. That like super hyper animated, blah 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 blah, blah, blah Alpha Mega. Yeah, yep, the Mega Man, was, the Mega Man one. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And then there's also a deal where you bought like the season pass for like ten bucks instead of like thirty five. I'm trying to think what's a. I mean, this, I also this... I also bought um. Oh, Sunset Overdrive DLC, which I haven't even played yet. Yeah, I did. Uh, I bought that. And what's a DLC that you regret? And I mean, I guess you could say the division so far. But, no, I don't regret that. I mean, I'm kind of happy with it, but it kind of stalled because we're waiting for the patch. But what's a what's a DLC you can think of that we might have bought that we regretted having purchased? I don't think I've ever regretted purchasing a DLC. I just, I think I waited. I mean, besides the division and destiny, I kind of knew those games were going to be good, and I liked them. I don't remember ever regretting a DLC purchase. Myself, I guess I'm a little bit on the division just because of how much it did fall off. And we're, yeah, it's, it's granted. I understand there is the update coming and stuff, but it's still how long I've been sitting on not playing it now that we're waiting on something. It's been just like to two months out of our yeah, just to get the best out of our bundled DLC. Yeah, yeah. You know what? There, there is something I kind of regret. Uh, I bought the the zombie DLC for Goat Simulator. Okay, okay. Because my daughter wanted it, and she thought it was something totally different. But it's it's like time challenges that you have to do. But I told her she should play the tutorial first. And she's like, I did. Hmm. I'm I'm trying to think of something like I wouldn't Witcher. 
Mm. Is the Witcher DLC or is that a game? <laughs> no, I think I, I didn't spend any DLC on that. <laughs> Evolve? You buy Evolve? Mm. No, I didn't buy it, but definitely mm-hmm. don't have any DLC for that either. Shadow of Mordor? Nope. Mm, okay. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for the question. At here, take my money. Uh, our next question, I'm not sure if it's the last, no, that's our last question, I should say, uh, comes from at He Man has a Chinese mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever get crazy haircuts? Or maybe as a child, you had a popular hairdo? Yes, and yes. <laughs> Did you have a mullet? <laughs> I had a mullet. And I don't believe it. And I had a crazy hairdo. I had a mohawk. A, like a standing up pretty high? Mm, no, not just like a, a poofy, you know, first grade kid with a, a mohawk. I wanted to be like Mr. T so bad. A pity fool. <laughs> but yes. I pity, I pity uh, the gym. But I, I think I had a mullet in... Probably sixth grade, maybe sixth grade or seventh grade. Dude, don't you have the Hulk Hogan now? <laughs> <laughs> maybe with my back hair. Holy yeah. shit. Oh my God. <laughs> he combs it out to look like. <laughs> <laughs> this is my back uh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I, had, I had a mullet. I uh, according to my wife. I think it was like a 80s, 90s. I think thing. it was a white person thing. I was say, Scotchy, I think you definitely rocked the mullet at one point, didn't you? Had the, you had the yeah, long I was, hair I in the back. I think I was going for the long hair, but I don't think I ever let the, or the front never grew as fast as the back did. Yeah, I, I think my, I think Deb Sully would have liked that. I don't, I don't think I had full on bushy top, long hair back type of mullet, but I definitely was going for the the long hair. And you remember the rat tail? I might have had oh, a, I, I might have had a rat tail too. I had the mullet rat tail. Okay, no, I never had the rat tail. I had, I had I think mine was like a mullet, but there was never business in the front. <laughs> just all party in the back. It was, yeah, for the most part, yeah. Was, was I was just... trying to go long hair, but it wasn't working. You weren't like Joe Dirt caliber. No. <laughs> yeah. Not. Just all Kentucky waterfall. Yeah, exactly. I had uh, I also grew my hair out to where I donated it. That I remember tough, that was like, right after you got uh my surgery, my uh, yeah, your back surgery, right? The second one, second, uh, second or third, it was 2013. So it was the would have been the second, second surgery, mm. but yeah, I grew it out because it was just like superstitious because I felt good. Was it your, then, your yeah. vagina hair or your normal hair? I wish it was my vagina hair, but was what was great about my surgery is my wife had to give me sponge baths. Ah, uh, nice, even with your long hair, that's great. She coming yeah. out for you too. The braids yeah i i gotta i gotta show you a picture i have uh i was in the hospital like 28 out of the 30 days because i had a spinal leak twice mm-hmm. and i just had vomit everywhere my hair was just so matted with vomit and she had a mm. comb it out nice. it was like standing up by itself without any hair product <laughs> it was terrible <laughs> Ew. All right, well, thank you for the question at he man has a chinese mullet uh <laughs> actually we have one more question uh-oh our last question comes from at uh, TWD is for me. Um, with The Walking Dead coming back this weekend, uh, you guys want to predict um, who you think uh, Lucille is going to end up mashing? Lucille, mm, I'm gonna, I'll go right out of the gate. I think it's going to be either you Glenn, said it last time, yeah, you said Glenn or Maggie, right? Glenn, Glenn or Maggie's going to get it. And I said the uh, the token black girl, Michonne. No. Oh, yeah. There's two token black uh, The other one. Oh, um, whose brother died. Jackass. Tyrese's uh, <laughs> sister. Yeah. I forget her name. Who, who's actually in love with She's Abraham, looking. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They've kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That could be a good Abraham's one. moved away from the uh, the Spanish flair. The Latino flair. Yep. Right. <laughs> um. So, wait. So, who are you saying? Kelk, you're saying. Either or who? either Glenn or Maggie's gonna bite it. I don't think it's gonna be both of them, but okay. I bet I mean, you Glenn says Norman of... Reedus. <laughs> no, I oh. was thinking uh, Abraham, just because he was Ooh. talking a lot of shit right at the uh, the end there, wasn't he? I don't remember seeing that. I can't watch the like shows that, right. that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch them to re- bring it. The recap. Yeah, okay. it's good. I can't wait. That's this. Uh, that comes out on what the. 
1923. Gonna, gonna have to DVR it because I'm watching Westworld. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. snap. All right. Well, thank you for the question. At TWD is for me. And uh, all right. That brings the show to an end. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. Uh, if you want, oh, no. We didn't even do beers. Beers. Nope. Uh, yay. Of course. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the uh, Scaldus a yay. I actually like it. It's uh, pretty smooth for twelve percent. And you guys feeling it or? Yeah, I'm starting to feel it pretty good right now. I'm feeling it too. Pigeon. My daughter just got up too. Oh no, Pigeon! I'm surprised you didn't put a whip in front of my uh, answer there. <laughs> Pigeon's yeah, gonna yeah, Pigeon's nay-nay. gonna wake up on the floor in the ba- <laughs> in the bathroom holding his daughter. <laughs> Dude, I just have like three three sips of my beer oh, no, with no, vomit no. all in his hair and where it stands up by itself. Yeah, oh, I'll send you the pic. It's disgusting. <laughs> no, maybe I'll tweet. Maybe don't. I'll put it on Twitter or something. There you go. All right, uh, Calc, pairing beer, uh, food pairing with your beer. Um, you chicken, honey, chicken, some kind of chicken. You don't you don't do snacks anymore. I'm eating pretzel crisps right now. Uh, All right, well, pretzel crisp. Uh, there it is. Done. Put it in. Right, write uh, it in again. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, you know, give some questions in, that'd be great. Uh, you can reach us at the Little Couch on Twitter and Gmail and YouTube and SoundCloud and iTunes. And yeah, just hit us up, give us a review, do something, let us know. And uh, if you want to reach out to us individually, you can reach Pigeon at Pigeon Pegleg, yep. Celtic Fox at Celtic Fox underscore LC, and myself at Scotchhound underscore LC. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you next time. Later. Later.